Sound good? <sighs> good. Natalie leads the session. Okay, so before we get started, let's set an intention for the journey. Okay. Because when we have a destination, it's much easier to reach it. So is there any area of life or any question or concern that you would like to find assistance with or clarity with? The only thing I can think of is I do not want to be reborn on this earth again. I want to be a guardian angel. I never want to come back. So whatever unfinished business I have here that I need to, like, karma-wise, that I need to pay back sort of or, like, balance out my karma, like, I want to do focus on that. Um, I mean, and then, of course, like, I, don't, I just don't really care anymore. Like, I, I cared about relationships for a long time, you know, like wanting a guy and I just don't even care about that um so it's hard for me to say like what is it that I want to have or resolve because it's almost like I'm at the point where I just I just don't want to be here anymore I just I'm just done so I don't know if that means that I have a problem because the problem could be I'm not enjoying this life so that could be a problem so intention might be you know like wanting to find enjoyment again in my life um, or my intention is for like I don't want to be reborn on this earth again I'll finish this life fine that's where I'm at but I don't want to be reborn again so what, what what do I have to do to finish up this karma and then just be done with this you know okay so it's so, pretty depressing, sorry. Uh, yeah, so I don't quite look at, um, I want to reframe it a little bit. Uh -huh. So um, you said something about paying my debts um, yeah. and getting out of here. So I don't look at karma so much as paying your debt. I'm more like we come here to experience physical life from kind of a 360 degree from a panoramic view so that experience every aspect of every experience. And karmic energy is that energy that pushes you towards the right experiences that you still need. So it's not like, oh, you've been bad, let's punish you. It's, okay, you've experienced it this way, you need to now see the opposite of it, so let's push you towards a different experience. So with that in mind, how about we frame it as you want to look at any lessons that are still in progress, any lessons that are still um, unresolved or unlearned. Feeling. Well, and I understand many human <laughs> humans don't want to be here, but when we return to our soul level, we kind of feel about it differently. Yeah, it's just a bunch of bullshit, you know. It's just you have to keep going through this, and I right. just don't want to be here. So... What is my intention? I guess to learn how to live with this feeling of not wanting to be here, you know? Okay. Maybe see what's blocking me from experiencing it in a better way. Okay. That can be a good direction too. All right, are you ready? Okay. So take a very deep breath in. And I'd like you to tell me the very first thing that you see, or the very first impressions that you get as you reach the surface. <clears throat> I feel like I'm in the woods. Describe the woods to me. Just a lot of very straight trees that go up. It's like like maybe pines. Mm -hmm. And what part of day is it? Like mid-afternoon, late morning. 
Is there anybody else with you there? No. I'd like you to look down at your feet and tell me what you're wearing on your feet. Just bare feet. And become aware of your body and tell me what you're wearing on your body. Just like rags. Tell me more. Are they in any particular shape? It feels like I'm like an old person. Okay. Are you in a male or a female body? Female. And about what age would you say you are? Maybe like over like 50 or 60. Mm -hmm. But it feels like I feel old like in that body. And what do your rags look like? Is it any particular clothing? It feels like kind of dirty clothes, like just nothing nice. Mm -hmm. And become aware of why you are in the woods right now. I guess I live there. Are you healthy? Um, it feels like my body is not not that healthy, but I'm alive, I guess. Okay. Like I can walk around still. So on the count of three, you're going to see yourself standing in front of the place where you live. One, two, and three. And tell me what you're experiencing. Like a opening to go into like a, it's not a mountain, but it's like, it's like rocky stuff that's like there's an opening and you can go in there and. Like a cave? Yeah. You can have a fire in there if you want to. And is it a big opening? It's enough to get through. Okay. So go ahead and enter it. Okay. And describe to me what you notice inside. Just like some things. It feels like something for eating, like some kind of berries and some kind of things to lay on. Like to sleep on? Yeah. What it's, are they? I don't know. It's just like old clothing, but not clothing, just more like some kind of scraps and things. What else do you notice there? Um, it's not exactly the dry, driest spa, spa, spot. It's like there's like it's wet a little bit. It's it's not it's it's a little gloomy. It's, it's, there's not too much light in there. What is wet? The 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 floor, the ground, like the uh, and the, the surrounding area. It's just like there's like water on it. Just feels dump like doesn't feel that dry but it doesn't feel bad it feels like it's cool in there it's okay it's just it's just, just okay safe feel safe okay how long have you lived there Feels like maybe a few years, like just hiding from people. Why are you hiding? Because I guess I'm odd or weird. What is weird about you? Cause, okay, I I can't like work. I guess I can't be useful. Why is that? <sighs> I guess you have to have a lot of strength to work. 
doesn't feel like I have family, so so I don't really have a place to be. And I guess nobody needs me. Do you not have strength? It feels like I have enough to just live, but not enough to like to like work. Just enough to like maybe do something little, but not too much. Have you ever worked? Yeah, yes. Okay. So for now, on the it kind of... It feels like I worked in the fields. Like mm -hmm. I, I was like a farmer or something. Like, like I had someone, like we were together, but something happened and I... No, I don't have him. Doesn't feel like we had kids. We feels like something was taken away from us because he died and then I couldn't I couldn't really work the fields anymore. All right, so let's let's stop there for a moment. For now, on the count of three, you're going to see yourself having a meal. One, two, and three. Describe to me your meal. It's like some kind of liquidy stuff. Doesn't taste very good. Like some kind of mushed up things. What did you mush up? Feels like leaves in there. Um, some kind of like vegetables that I'm growing. Go outside of the cave and see where you grow things. It's more it's more like I'm picking things, I guess. Just picking things. I don't have a lot of food. Feels like a kind of a not 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 a very good life. Just getting by. But I have water. I just can't place, I can't see it where I'm getting the food, but it's not a lot of food. Okay. It's like I try to find like roots of things and I try to dig them out. And so it's like I'm trying to like find things in the woods to eat. Okay. So you forage for food. Mm hmm. And become aware of how you feel about your life at this moment? It feels like I don't want to be there anymore. Like I'm just... like alone. But it does feel nice to be in nature. Mm -hmm. So I, I am appreciative of like still being able to live. So now on the count of three, we're going to rewind the time. And you're going to return back to the time when you shared your life with someone and when you lived in a different place, not in this forest. One, two, and three. Tell me what you're experiencing. I'm a young woman. How old are you? My 20s. Mm-hmm. I'm full of life and I feel happy and just got married. Who did you marry? Someone I love. I don't know his name right now. Where did you meet him? Feels like he knew me. He, he, we grew up around each other. It's like the same. Same community. Okay. And I'd like you to become aware of what you're wearing and describe it to me. It feels like I have something on my head, like a, like a maybe a whitish kind of like a, something, like a white thing that I'm wearing on my head. It feels like I have a long kind of dress, but not big puffy dress just kind of like to the ground but like not big feels like it's darker like um 
maybe uh, darker, like gray or brown or something. Just uh, not, not like it's very practical. It's not very like. It's very practical, but I have something on my head, like a white thing, like a, like a hat, of some kind. Can you describe it a little bit more? What well, shape? Is I it? can see it, but I can't really like tell you what it is. Like I don't, I, I don't know what those are called. I can see it, but I don't know what it's called. It's just. Is it flat? Is it? It's Erased. like it has flops on the sides, like a little bit. It feels not flops, but it's just I can't describe it. Does it have know. a brim? A uh, badge? No, it's mm, it doesn't feel like a brim. It's like a like a hood, but it's not. It's like you put it on and it's just like that. Okay. So I want you to become aware of the people around you. Tell me if you see them. I don't think I wear this hat all the time. It's just sometimes it feels like I wear it. Okay. Um, it seems like very simple, like a very simple life. We eat together. We we work kind of like in the field, but we also have chickens and we like we're happy together. We're just just happy. So do you see anybody else wearing the same type of headwear? Um in the church, yeah. Who wears it in church? Women. And do they only wear it when they go to church? Yeah, it seems like that's that's like more like like important. Mm. You it's, don't have to always wear it, I don't think. Sometimes when I'm working in the field, I don't wear it. Is it a Sort of a fancy wear, or is it a symbol of station or prestige? No, it's just all the women wear it, I guess. I, I don't think it's, it's a class thing. Okay. So now see yourself standing in front of a place where you live with your husband. Describe it to me. Hmm. Feels kind of like made made out of wood and some clay. It's it's just I can't see the pictures very clearly, but I can. You can come come up to it and touch it, and you will know. Yeah, it's um, very earthy. Like it's it's just very. Mm, like a sturdy, sturdy, very practical home. Oh. I want you to see yourself standing inside the home that you share with your husband. I remember that we have pigs, too. Okay. And where do you keep the pigs? Next to the house. Is there any particular structure that holds them? Hmm. I see them kind of the outside a little bit, like there's a fenced-in area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there is something in the back where they can go in, inside and sleep and have a roof. Okay. Do you keep any other animals? Just the chickens. Chickens and the pigs? Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you go inside the house, become aware of who lives there now. Um, it's definitely me and my husband. 
I think we, I don't know about the kids. It feels like we don't have kids. Okay. What else do you notice inside the house? It will just begin to come to your attention very clearly. For some reason, I can't see the house. Is it one story or two story? One story. Okay. And do you notice multiple rooms there? Or a few, but like mostly it's one open area. And there's maybe one or two other rooms in there. Like it just feels like it's not that big. Okay. Tell me about your relationship with your husband. Hmm. I think it's just like started really nice and I think it's going worse. Why is that? It's like there's, we don't have a lot of money. I guess there's payments, some kind of like we have to make payments. I guess we're leasing the land. So it feels like I'm unhappy because I feel like he's not doing everything that he can. Like, I'm just like, I was really happy and now I'm complaining, I guess, a lot. It's like, I'm not happy. What do you think he should be doing that he's not doing? I think he is doing everything that he can, but it's just, I think we're set up like the system is just too, it's, it's the payments are too much. Like, it's just too much. We can't, we can't keep making these payments. The fields are not bringing in the amount of money that we need. So we're just working every day really hard and then going to church. And I guess, I, I don't know. I'm not sure if I have kids or not, but it's just it's too much. We're just always working and we're barely surviving. What do you do during the day? It feels like I'm cooking. I'm feeding the pigs. I'm gardening. I'm always mad because it's just no matter what I do, it's never enough. And then it feels like he's in the fields, but he's by himself. We can't afford any help. So I try to help him too. But it's hard work. It feels like we're trying to plow the field or something. And I don't know what happened. I, I don't feel like we have a horse for some reason. Like something happened with the horse. Um, it just feels like we're on our own. We're just, we're just struggling really bad. So move forward in time. And just perhaps a year or two. And tell me how um, your relationship is faring. It feels like I aged really fast. Like I feel like we we ran away, like we had to run away. We can't make our payments. They're gonna try to kill us. If we don't pay them, they're gonna take everything, all the animals. But if we stay, like, they're going to beat us up because we don't have the money. Who's they? Somebody that's like, collects the payments. They are not very good people. They're just going to... It just feels like they're going to do something to us. So we have to... We just can't do it anymore. Like, we have to run off. Yeah, we're going to hide in the woods. We're going to try to go to a different community with start somewhere else because they're going to just try to tell us to keep paying this. We can't afford it. I'm, I'm not very happy with, with my husband. I feel like he should have done more. But I don't think he could. How does he feel about you? I think he's just given up. He just doesn't want to, he can't, he can't do it. He just, he just given up. 
He's not talking. Okay. Just shut down. And is it just the two of you? <sighs> Did your family change at all? It feels like we left kids behind, but like... Did we have kids? Feels like we left kids now that I'm in the woods with him. It feels like we left something behind. We had to run off. We had to, like, just, just as we were standing, we had to just run off. So, yeah, but it does feel like we left kids behind, like. So I want you to go back to the. the feels like we gave them to some, like, we, we told somebody we would come and collect them later. Like, just feels like we left them there. So go back to the day mm. when you were leaving. And as you prepare to leave, you will begin to put the pieces together. I don't and want to remember. <sighs> it's okay. You're going to release it and just view it as information. <laughs> we have to. We have to leave our children. <laughs> Why do you have to leave them? <laughs> we have to <laughs> We can't take them. It's too dangerous. We don't know if we're going to survive. These people are going to find us. <laughs> we have to. We have to leave them. <laughs> and what do you do with your children? Tell them to run to the neighbors. <laughs> so it's that um, urgent. Yes. Was there no planning for it? We were hoping to sell something. We didn't. We didn't make the money. Okay. So take a deep breath. As you breath in. As you breathe out, you're going to begin to release the pain and the sorrow. Just become aware of the information. Releasing the pain, it's going to begin to subside immediately as you feel more and more at peace. Just observing it as you would watch a movie on a screen. Letting it go, another deep breath in. Breathing it all out and letting it go. Simply being aware of it. How many children do you have? Three. Three? One is little. One is seven. One is five. One is two. Two, five, and two seven. Seven year old. To take the two year old. I didn't tell her to run. So the seven year old needs to take them? Yeah. And do they do that? Yeah. I'm kind of harsh with them. I have to be harsh. Mm -hmm. I have to be harsh. I have to tell them to run. And do they just go to the neighbors? They understand. The girl's very smart. She's very smart. She will take care of them. She will take care of them. Mm -hmm. And what do you do then? We have to run. Say it again. You're you're doing what? We have to leave. It's so hard to leave the kids. It's so hard to leave the kids. <laughs> Where do you go? I, I don't even know what's happening. I just he's holding me. He's leading the way. Is your husband he's leading taking you? And what happens then? I just have to, I have to keep moving, keep going. They will find us. 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 Take a deep breath in. <laughs> they will find us. 
feel my touch and release, release. Let go, let go, breathe it out, release, release, let go. Take another deep breath in. Feel peace flowing through you as you release the pain and the sorrow. Simply observe as information, feeling peaceful, more and more at peace, knowing that all is well, more and more at peace with every breath that you take. Now move forward in time to the next day and tell me where you find yourselves. <sighs> I was trying to make fire in the woods. I was trying to find wood. My husband is not talking to me. I am mad. I'm just so mad. I'm just so mad. What are you mad about? That we can't make it happen. We can't happen. We can't make it happen. You can't make what happen? We can't make these payments. We tried so hard. <laughs> Life is not fair. Do you think your yeah. husband is responsible for that? No. He's tried. <laughs> I tried too, which is never enough. <laughs> but I'm so angry at him because it's, <laughs> because it's easier to be mad at him. I understand. mean to him because I feel like he needs to protect us and he can't we have to leave the kids we don't even know if we're gonna come back and get them so once again you're going to move forward in time as you travel through time you're going to experience a deepening sense of release as peace flows through your body through every muscle Moving forward in time to the next significant moment in that journey. Tell me what happens. They found us. Who's they? It's a group of people. It's just they collect money. They have no mercy. What happens? I'm screaming to get my husband because they're catching me and I'm screaming for him to maybe go, maybe just leave, maybe just get the kids, maybe they caught him too. And he's in front and he's just not saying anything. He's just, they have him. They're going to kill him. They're going to kill him. How long have you been on the run? Not long. Maybe two days, maybe three. Feels like we're just, we just never get a break. We're just, just. <sighs> they kill him. How do they kill him? I scream and scream and scream. God. He's just, he just gave up. He's not even trying, so he's just. How do they kill him? Right in front of me. I just, I don't want to see it. It just feels like my life ended. And what happens next? They rape me. They rape me. Okay, you're going to see yourself floating out of your body right now. <laughs> Letting go. So you can observe and not feel. Right now. Feel my touch. Let go. Floating out of your body and just feeling yourself floating above. Please God Observing it and letting go of the feeling. Deep breath in. Deep breath in. And feel it floating out. Deep breath in again. Floating out. Deep breath in again, letting go. 
You're going to just observe it as though it is a movie. What happens? What happens after that? They leave you? Do they leave you? Okay, they left. I'm bleeding. And you're bleeding? So if you can never go back, what do you what do you decide to do? On the count of three, you're going to find yourself shifting internally, experiencing a release of that experience, finding yourself at another time when you're in a much more calm and peaceful frame of mind. One, two, and three, shifting now. Tell me about your life and the decisions you have made. Where are you now? I'm a servant. I'm serving. I'm in a, in a big house. There's lots of stairs. Lots of different stairs. But I'm not happy. You're not happy? Mm -mm. Why? It just feels like I'm always working. And I don't feel like <coughs> anybody loves me. Just, just working time serving people how did you find that job um like a, like a housemaid like a housemaid but there's lots of different servants there's lots of different ones one of maybe 20 it's just 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 always running, doing something for someone. Somebody's oh. going to the market. Buying food. Someone is going or you go? I'm going sometimes. Okay. How long have you been at this place? Mm, it feels like my whole life. Most of my life. Did you have to travel far to find it? No, it feels like it was given to me. Like it was like I, like I already lived there. I was um, raised by the by the main house lady. Did you say you were raised by them? Yeah. She was like didn't call her mom. It was more, more like, like ma'am, like like a, like she was my master, but she was but she was also like my mom, but she wasn't my mom. She was just kind of strict. Are you the same person that ran away with her husband? No. Okay. No, I'm a different person. Okay, so tell me about this person. How old are you? Um, maybe eighteen now. Okay, just just they're 
just learned that, that that she might want to marry me to someone, and maybe I'm not gonna be a maid anymore. And she told me that's a good thing. I guess it's gonna be good. I'm gonna have a house. Okay. And um, I don't like that. I don't. I don't want to go there. I don't want to be married. Why not? I don't trust him. Is there a particular person that she intends to marry? To? Yeah, she wants to. It's, it's kind of like he's a baker. He's, he's, he's a baker. He, he seems nice, but I don't love him. I don't want him. Why do you not trust him? Something about him. Just, you know, I don't know. Is he going to be able to take care of me and protect me? Just, I don't want to be married. Is it important for you to feel that someone takes care of you and protects you? Well, if I'm going to live my life and I'm going to be with him, like he needs to be able to make sure that I have food. And I don't, I don't know. Will he be able to? Do you have a choice in this marriage? No. My headmistress is saying that I have to, whatever her name is, I don't know. She's saying that that it's like it's already done, that I can't, like this is the best offer, this is the best guide, this is the best opportunity, and he's right, like on the same level, I guess, like he's in the same... Like, he's a little below, but that's okay because I'm not, like, I don't really have a place in life. I don't have a name. So he's going to, he's going to be fine. He's going to, she's telling me he's going to be a good provider for me. He's going to, he's a baker. He, he's going to be fine. Do you know who your parents are? <sighs> Do you no. have a family? So it, it feels like I was just dropped off. Like I was just like dropped off. Mm-hmm. As a like baby. At this house? Yeah. Okay. And the the the, the woman took care of me. I feel like she she took me in. She didn't have kids. She was not married. It feels like she belongs to this house, to this family. But she doesn't, but she does. She lives there and she directs everything. And she's like a big boss. And she's... She takes me in and she teaches me everything. She's very, very cold. Just always just cold okay so on the count of three I'd like you to move to the next significant event or moment in that life one two and three tell me what's happening um it feels like I don't want to it feels like I feels like I'm ashamed Feels like I'm in ashamed of angry what? and ashamed. Um feels like um I trusted a boy. I shouldn't have trusted a boy. A boy? Yeah. He's 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 a good looking boy. He's higher up. He's 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 pre- <sighs> What is what are you feeling? Um he he uh, tells me that he will, he will be with me. He 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 uh, 
he has sex with me. I shouldn't have sex. <sighs> and what are you experiencing? I'm scared. <sighs> I'm scared because I don't know what to do. <sighs> I promised to be a wife. I don't know what to do. <sighs> are you with child? <sighs> it feels like that's what I am. It feels like... My tummy's growing. So move forward in time a little bit and tell me what happens. I don't know what to do. He says that he's going to be with me. He's going to do what? He's going to be with me, he says. Who is he? Well, I think I love him. He's, he's, he's a son of the people that come and visit sometimes. He, he has a name, I guess he has money. He says that he's going to be with me. No, well, that's nice. I guess my life it will be better. Maybe, maybe he loved me. Nobody ever loved me. Do you trust him? Well, I want to trust him. I do want to trust him. What happened to the baker? Well, I never loved him anyway. I don't care about him. I don't really want to be with him. I, I feel like maybe my life will be better with, with this boy. He says he will be with me. He says he loves me. So move forward in time to the next significant event or moment in that life and tell me what happens. No, I don't want to. Um, yeah, I'm waiting for him, but he's not going to come. I don't want to go there. Where are you waiting for him? Um, we're supposed to go somewhere together. We're supposed to start life together. We're supposed to leave because he can't be with me here because everybody knows me and I don't have a name and I'm an orphan and nobody want it and and his family has a name and he can give me a better life but he says we can't stay here because everybody knows him and his family would be ashamed. So we have to go somewhere else. We have to start from nothing. We just have to leave. Um, I'm waiting. I, I don't want to be excited. Because I already know he's not coming. Are you just waiting for something to happen or are you waiting as in meeting yeah, him? Yeah, I see. I see it. I see it. I don't want to feel it. I just see it. I'm waiting and I'm so happy. Like, my life is going to start. Like, he said, we're going to have this amazing life together and it's going to be wonderful and, and he's going to be there and he's going to love me and things are going to be good. And finally, somebody loves me, and, 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 yeah, and I'm waiting for him. And he, 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 he comes, but he can't, he says he can't go with me, and he has to stay here. And he just, he just gives me some money, and I don't even want his money, like, 
but he puts it in my pocket. He says that he can't be with me. He says just, and just turns around and leaves. Yeah, I already have the ticket. Feels like it's, it's a train station and, and he's not gonna go with me. What do you do? I don't think I can go back because I don't know, but I feel like maybe I'm pregnant. Um, if I, that would be that would be a shame. I can't I can't go back. I can't. Um, I don't have a choice. I have to leave. I uh, I don't know where I'm, what I'm gonna do when I get there, but. No, I, I have to leave. So become aware of where you're traveling to. It feels like Europe somewhere. It feels like feels like um maybe like German speaking countries. Okay. So move forward in time to the moment when you arrive to your destination. Mm-hmm. Tell me what happens then. I think I have enough money for for six months at least of rent and food. Um, I'm heartbroken. I don't know how to make money. Uh, I need to get a job. Um, I, I'm struggling. I'm, I feel, I feel really alone now. Like, the city's different. It's too much. It's overwhelming me. How is it different? It's just there's more people and there's beggars everywhere and it's um, it's filthy and I have to find a job. It's just disgusting. Um, what kind of job are you looking for? Uh, work? What kind of work? Maybe maybe I can be a maid again. Mm. It feels like you have to know people. I don't know anybody. But I have enough money still. I'm going to save. I'm going to try to save. Mm. I'm going every day trying to find something. And how does your body feel? How is your health? Um... Feels um like my my tummy's growing. Um I feel lonely. Um I think I'm gonna have to be a whore. I don't know how else I'm gonna make money. I don't wanna do that. I don't I don't I don't wanna do that. Oh, Oh, why did I leave? Why did I believe? Oh, I was so stupid. Mm. And move forward in time to the next significant moment or to the conclusion of that pregnancy if you're pregnant. Yeah, I decided I can't go on. I, I just, I'm just going to I just have to take my life. I can't do this anymore. I, if I, if I go on, then I'll deliver this baby, and the baby's gonna be an orphan. Because I'm no good. I can't provide for this baby. I'm no good. I can't. I can't provide. 
I don't want the baby to be ashamed of me. I don't want this baby to have this life like I had. I just, I just have to, I have to finish this life. I have to end it. What do you do? I want to make sure I do good. I do, I do finish it. Like, I get rat poison. I'm going to eat that. And, um, and I'm going to get some rope. And I'm going to do, do it both ways. Because there's nothing better. Nothing's better. Nobody's going to... Nobody's going to rescue you. Nobody's going to help you. Nobody's going to... Oh, it's just not good. Just, It's just you're alone. Nobody's going to help you. Do you go through with it? Yeah. I want you to feel your soul lifting out of that body and feeling immediate relief and peace. As you look back at the life you just left behind, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? That if I waited, if I trusted God, I would get help. You would get help if you trusted God? Trust. What do you mean by that? What should you have waited for? If I waited, he would have came back for me. The young man? The baker, I didn't care about it. I didn't care about it at all. Say it again, the baker. Mm -hmm. The baker would have come back for mm -hmm. you? So he really did care? Yes. He cared more than I thought. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand him. Did he come looking for you? Yes. It was too late. When did he come back? I was already dead. He was dead. Mm -hmm. He was dead for a few days. He found me. Now as your soul continues to leave behind its human identity, you're going to experience a deeper and deeper sense of release. Letting go, releasing the pain, the sorrow, the trauma that accumulated in your body throughout that life. I want you to imagine that you enter into a healing chamber that surrounds you with a cloud of healing light. It is almost like a cleansing shower that begins to wash away the pain, the fear, the sadness, and all of the physical trauma that your body experienced as it transitioned through death. almost like washing away sand and dust that you pick up as you walk through a desert, just washing it away, releasing it, and letting go. So that what you're left with is a learning experience, that you let go of the trauma and let go of the pain. I want you to also experience and allow yourself to have the healing from the sexual assault that you experienced in a different life in the woods, releasing that trauma, 
venting it out, forgiving yourself, forgiving your body. Allowing yourself to let go of the sorrow, the sadness, and the blame of leaving your children behind. As a soul, you begin to remember and understand that all of those were learning experiences. They were part of a pattern of lessons. And you have gained from them what you needed to gain. And you can let go and release the trauma associated with them. Feeling yourself being completely healed, infused and surrounded by white light, becoming fully whole again. And tell me how that feels, that process. It feels better. <clears throat> feels good. Is it complete or does it need to continue? That's what's complete. Good. Now I want you to become aware from a soul perspective what the purpose was of the two life experiences that you have visited. First, the life of a woman who had to leave her children behind. What was the purpose that you set for that life? It's a, it's a test. Of what? Of trust. And who are you meant to trust? You need to trust that things happen the way they're supposed to. And how did you do with that trust? I was trying to do it all myself. And I was trying to do too much myself. Now, from the human perspective, that life was really... Hard yes. and unfair and difficult. Yes. So what is it that you're seeing differently now? What was it that what is it that you say was the way that it was supposed to? Just um all these souls they had to experience everything that they had to experience, the suffering, the being being an orphan. Um, the kids, they had to experience that. Um, that was their test. Um, it just was meant to be this way. So everybody was there from a soul perspective knowing that this is this the experiences they chose? Yes. Mm-hmm. And as you go to the second life, I guess that's where you were also, you were an orphan. Mm -hmm. And you took your own life mm -hmm. while being with child. Mm -hmm. So what was the purpose that you set for that life as a soul? The same, just to learn to trust. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't trust. That's right. That seems to be a pattern, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I want you to look around while you're in spirit, and you may notice that there's someone there that's greeting you and welcoming you back. Mm, I don't want to because I don't want to remember because I won't want to come back. They may offer you some insight that might be helpful <laughs> because it seems like, as Alicia... You took the same lesson, the same pattern into this life. 
once again, not trusting the process, not trusting that you are here because you choose to be here and because you're in the right place at the right time. And just let me know if anyone comes to your attention and to your awareness. It's more like a feeling. It's just you're always protected. You're always you're always surrounded with love. And you just need to allow. Just need to allow for it to come to you. And when you're so busy trying to not trust and do everything yourself, then you're closing that door. So if you just allow it, then then that love is going to come. And sometimes bad things are going to happen, but they're supposed to happen for a higher purpose. So, so if you don't fight it so much, if you don't exhaust yourself with fighting so much, if you just allow, then that's the purpose. The purpose is to just be. Is that why those two lives were presented to you? Yes. What else are you getting from it? You just stop fighting. Say it again. You need to stop fighting. You need to stop fighting. Fighting. I wonder if they can also help you and spirit will speak to you in whatever way is most appropriate. I, I miss home. Say it again. I miss home. I, miss I know. And what the, what can they tell you about missing home and being here? <laughs> They're laughing. They're laughing. Why they are say, they laughing? Because they say I'm so silly. It's, 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 it's silly. They say I'm already home. I don't want to. I'm not feeling it. They say I can feel it if I just allow myself. But I don't know how to allow it. I don't remember. I forgot. And in fact, perhaps they will remind you that you have never left home because there is nowhere else that is not home. You're always here. Hmm? There's no other place. It's just... And it's just a shift of focus to a different experience, just like you're doing now. I'm always escaping, escaping, mm -hmm. running away. And in both of those lives, you did exactly that. Yes. And then you learned that if you had just waited and trusted. But I don't want to wait. And that's always your choice. Do you know that? That that's always your choice. You can continue to have these for as long as you want. It's like I'm fighting. Or you can just relax and allow that there is a reason. It feels like if I stop fighting it, then something is going to be revealed to me. And, and then it's going to feel like everything was silly, like there was no purpose. It's just, it just feels like there's something that I'm afraid of. Like if that one part... It's going to be unlocked. Then everything else made no sense. Something in me is fighting it. 
to know something. I am fighting it. I'm I'm trying not to know something. I don't know why I'm trying not to know it. Feels like if I know that one part, then somehow somehow I didn't have to do all this fighting ever. And life would be so easy, but but it's scary. It's just scary to let go. It's scary. And is there anybody there that can help you see that one part? Perhaps that's the part that all of this is a game that you have set up for yourself. That you are the ultimate game designer. No. And you choose how many levels of the game you want to play. And how complex and difficult it's going to become. Yep. Running away to find myself again. Mm -hmm. And I'm also laughing at it. And I'm also trivializing it. And detaching from it. It seems like you have had a number of times when you have experienced the running away. So perhaps the karmic forces can now help push you towards not running away and relaxing into this game, which can be challenging. But ultimately, you chose to enter it. And you can choose to leave it. I can't. I can't ever leave it. I have to finish. The late lesson from that other life is that I can't do it. I can't take my own life again. Because I'm going to have to come back and redo it again and fix it, so I don't want to keep redoing it. The reason you have to come back is because you haven't actually experienced the letting go. Right. Yes. And so how does it feel to you now? Would, you, would it feel okay to, just for the fun of it, to allow yourself to try trusting and relaxing? What would that look like for you or feel like for you? Like I would be able to breathe. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be scared. Now, as you become more and more aware that the experiences you had in the past have accumulated a lot of trauma and pain, and so it is understandable that there is fear underneath. But I wonder if now you're ready to make a choice to release all that fear, knowing that behind all of those experiences, you stand designing the game. And that it is your choice to learn to trust, your choice to stay and not run away. Because at some level, a part of you feels that that is what you want to have. That's what you want to experience. Can you trust that part of you that has a higher perspective and can see further than Alicia can. And it is always your choice. Whether you think you can or cannot, it is your choice. But you choose in every moment as your awareness of reality expands. 
So what do you choose? To trust. Good. And so in your mind, I want you to say, I choose to trust. I release the pain and trauma of the past. I release the pain and trauma of the past. I choose to conclude this lesson. I choose to conclude this lesson. I choose to bring it to conclusion. I choose to bring it to conclusion. I choose to experience trust. I choose to experience trust. I choose to stay. How does that feel? Good. It's good. Become aware if there is any other information, guidance, or wisdom that is delivered to you. It's good. It's good. Good. Now we're going to begin to let go of the images, the scenes, and the lives that we have experienced leaving them behind, leaving the people within them to go on their own path. They will experience resolution of their path as is appropriate to them. As you begin to release, all of those images begin to float and drift away. I want all of the consciousness and personality of Alicia to once again return to this body and fully integrate into it. I want you to remember that everything that you have observed and experienced is from the past. It belongs in the past and it will stay in the past. We can use it only as information that helps apply to the present, help you find solutions and wisdom in the present but you will not be affected mentally, physically, or emotionally in a negative way by this information. This is very important. None of the information that you have received or experienced will negatively affect you mentally, physically, or emotionally as you listen to the recording and integrate it into your life. It will not have any, any negative effect on you, physically, mentally, or emotionally. Now in a moment, I'm going to count from 1 to 10. And on the count of 10, you will awaken in a fully non-suggestible state, feeling very much refreshed, relaxed, and at peace. With every count, allow yourself to release any remnants of the experience, knowing that you will not have any negative impact mentally, physically, or emotionally. On the count of 10, you will awaken fully refreshed and rested. One, beginning to bring yourself back into the room. Two, moving your body around, beginning to integrate fully. Three, becoming aware of the sounds in the room. Four, returning back into this time and place. All right. Five, six, seven, oh, God. eight, fully back now, nine, <sighs> and ten, eyes open and wide awake. Oh, we need Welcome to... back. Oh, I need the lights off now. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Do you remember the experiences? Uh, yeah. I, yeah. What are your thoughts on them? Um, I... It's, it's kind of weird because, um, you know, it... I, I remembered some of it before. Some of these elements. Um, but this time I remembered more. Mm -hmm. I didn't, it, it, for a long time, it felt like I couldn't remember the rest of it. Through meditation, I remembered 
parts of these lives before. But I didn't remember some of the details that I was remembering today, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Now, it's, it's always interesting to me because I always look for patterns. Yes, yes. And there was a clear pattern here right. with uh, escape, right. not wanting to be somewhere, mm -hmm. um, feeling that life is unfair that, or things are unfair, yes. that you can't win, mm -mm. that you're not... I feel exactly the same way now. Yeah, yeah. and that you're not, um, I don't know about loved and supported, but definitely right. in those two lives that nobody's going to care, nobody's right. going to take care of you, and right. it's kind of very consistent. Yes, and what I find is that when we set the intention or a clear issue at the beginning, it's like dominoes just line up. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so it was uh, very interesting. Do you feel in any way different, any kind of just shift for you, even, even I, if it's just mental? or? I think I know why I feel so exhausted, you know, a little clearly, clearer mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. um, I I think I don't realize maybe how much of the past life's patterns we still bring in with us. Mm -hmm. And for me to be this exhausted doesn't really make sense from this point of view, from, from as, this life. From this life. Mm -hmm. And the level of just distrust, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, it doesn't seem to make sense. You know, mm -hmm. I've been hurt, but not that bad. Right. Things were not that bad. Mm -hmm. um, so for me to feel the level of being exhausted, distrust, not wanting to live, just mm -hmm. not wanting to be here, uh, my life is not that bad. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but it's not. <laughs> I mean, so for me to have all that doesn't seem to make sense. But if you put it in the context of, where my soul is coming from and what kind of lives it's it's been through it makes a lot a lot of sense Absolutely. to to just be so exhausted i mean i feel that sense of um life is too painful like that's something that's like always with me like life is too painful if you wait long enough it's going to get worse just you know just kind of like grab life while you can because it's not going to last. Which um, perfectly aligns with the experiences of those two lives. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Which is, that's kind of how past lives show up. They're, they're built into our subconscious mm -hmm. and they just kind of talk to us quietly. And you can have a different experience in this life, different right. evidence presented right. to you, but there's something whispering still in your mind. Yeah. Um, so you may find that there is a shift because you did a lot of releasing and right. obviously there's a lot of trauma. Yeah, and the kids thing, you know, like yeah. I never uh, never even been pregnant, mm -hmm. um, never wanted to be for a long, long time. In, the, um, in this life? In this life. And then uh, always felt like, um, like, I don't know, like it would be too... Um, like it would be some kind of a burden that I would have to, like kids would be something that I would have to take care of, protect. Am I capable of that? Would I be able to make enough money? Would I be, so, mm. it, so it was always kind of like that thing where I was like, no, 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 no. You know, I cannot, no, I, I, I can't, I can't have kids. Um, and then, you know, 30s hit and uh, I, I felt like, you know, I would like to have kids, but by that point my ex-husband was leaving, you know. Um and so I feel like um, this kind of gives me also a little more uh, clarity on uh, maybe there's just so much trauma surrounding the whole kids issue along with a pregnancy that um, it makes sense that in this life I would have chosen a life where I wouldn't have kids, number one. Yeah, but also there is that... <laughs> Fear and mistrust exactly. that you can um, that you're capable of protecting right. them, because right. in both lives you weren't. Able I was I wasn't able to protect my kids, right? So so yeah. yeah. So it makes sense that you know in in this life I would um, not have kids, right. even though a part of me wants kids, but you know, but I, but then another part of me feels so old. Mm -hmm. It's it, and nobody can really understand it, right? People will say, "Oh, like you look young" or whatever, but on the inside, I feel really old. I feel so tired. I feel uh, exhausted from like 
just fighting. It feels like I'm fighting every day, you mm -hmm. know, like a farmer trying to um, work with their hands with the soil and it's never enough. And mm -hmm. you're just exhausted on so many different levels that it's hard to explain. Uh, but it, again, maybe doesn't make sense from this point of view. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But it, but makes it does sense. make sense. Yeah. From it's interesting that you chose not to have children in this life. And I don't mean chose yes. consciously. I mean, right. you know, um, subconsciously. Because it almost like it, it made the load a little lighter. Because yes. before you had mm -hmm. to deal with all the harshness. Yes. But also on top of it, have the pain of you know, how emotional it pain. the emotion oh, yeah. pain of children. In this life, it's almost like, okay, learn to trust, right? but don't worry about the kids. Let's right. eliminate that sort of variable Yes. so that you can maybe try it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it feels, uh, you know, like um, like that fighting inside, you know, like you have to protect yourself, you have to survive, like th like always on the survival mode, you know, like... Um, and I'm always just in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, it's not that bad. You have food, you mm -hmm. have shelter, like nothing's going to be that bad. Like it could be so much worse, you know? And again, it's like, okay, I always had shelter, <laughs> you know, I right. always had food. Right. Um, and my parents were always there for me, you know, mm -hmm. I, I was never alone, but it always feels like I'm alone trying to survive. You yeah. know, that's what it feels like. Wow. Mm -hmm. Makes now sense. we know now, why. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. How are you feeling now? Uh, a little better. More. A little better. Normal. Yeah, a little more back to normal. Yeah, you just need a little more time yeah. to adjust. And um, give yourself plenty of water and rest mm -hmm. in the next few days because you need to just, your body needs to energetically rebalance. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you for doing this. Oh, thank and, uh, you for sharing your. Your painful stories with us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad this life is a little better. <laughs> uh, thank God. <laughs> yeah.